हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द चैप्टर 18 ऑफ हिमाटोलॉजी दैट इज हिमोलाइटिक एनीमिया कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग टू माई चैनल हिमोलाइटिक एनीमिया हियर द टर्म हिमोलाइसिस मीन्स डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ आर बी सीज सो हिमोलाइटिक एनीमिया इज अ डिजॉर्डर इन विच आर बी सीज आर डिस्ट्रॉइड फास्टर देन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दीज सेल्स सो the rate of the destruction and production do not match and due to the excessive destruction it leads to anemia and anemia due to destruction of rbc is called as hemolytic anemia now let's understand the classification of hemolytic anemia classification of hemolytic anemia based on etiology there are two causes it might be inherited cause or it might be acquired in inherited now here let's uh, understand one thing we have the rbc here rbc has a cell membrane it has hemoglobin it has many enzymes in it whenever there is any abnormality in the membrane if there is any abnormality in the membrane those are such as hereditary spirocytosis and elliptocytosis these two types of uh, hemolytic anemias are due to the abnormality in the membrane of the rbc if there is some deficiency of any enzyme it might lead to hemolytic anemia enzyme such as g6pd glycolytic pathway or pyrimidin 5 nucleotidase so these deficiency of these enzymes will lead to hemolytic anemia now again another type of hemolytic anemias are due to the any disturbance or abnormality of the hemoglobin first one is the thalassemias and the sickle cell disease so in inherited due to membrane abnormality we have hereditary spirocytosis and elliptocytosis due to enzyme deficiency we have g6pd anemia glycolytic pathway deficiency and pyrimidin 5 nucleotides and in hemoglobin hemoglobin abnormalities we have thalassemias and sickle cell disease now we come to the acquired type in inherited it is due to genetic causes whereas in acquired it is further divided into immune and non immune due to any immunity based causes and these are non immune type so in immune we have a uh, further division as auto antibodies and allo antibodies in auto antibodies we have warm antibodies cold antibodies and mixed antibodies these all uh, are the types of uh, anemias and in allo we have the hemolytic disease of the newborns and Uh, hemolytic anemia of transfusion reaction whereas in non immune we have various types such as mechanical infection due to infection due to chemical and which is acquired due to abnormal membrane so in short actually uh, it's like tricky but you sh- it's very easy for you to remember just remember the very important ones inherited are uh, due to membrane hemoglobin uh, abnormality and enzyme deficiency whereas in acquired you have the allo antibodies where hemolytic disease of newborn is a important one so this was all about the classification of hemolytic anemias okay. now when ever you hear the word hemolytic anemia we usually hear the extravascular hemolysis and intravascular hemolysis so let's just get a glance of what these actually mean in extravascular hemolysis here the word itself suggests it is extra intra means inside vessel extra means outside vessel so extravascular hemolysis means there is the destruction of rbc is taking place outside the vessels it means premature removal or destruction of rbcs by reticular endothelial cells of liver and spleen so the reticular endothelial cells of the liver and spleen causes hemolysis of the rbc so such hemolysis is called as extravascular hemolysis 
well as intravascular hemolysis the term itself suggests that intra means inside the vessel and hemolysis is destruction so whenever there is destruction of rbc inside the vessel it is called as intravascular hemolysis here the red cell lysis occur with the blood stream so due to membrane if there is some membrane damage by infections or mechanical trauma or oxidative damage these any causes might lead to the destruction of rbc inside the vessel now uh, let's understand whenever there is destruction or whenever there is breakage or any trauma to the cell membrane of rbc the free hemoglobin is seen more into the uh, vessels now this free hemoglobin it is toxic to us free hemoglobin is not good it is very toxic in nature so there are cells such as hepatoglobin globin which is also alpha 2 globin which take up this free hemoglobin and bind together so once these hepatoglob uh, hepatoglobins are saturated what happens once this is formed now once all the hepatoglo hepatoglobins are saturated free hemoglobin is oxidized to form the methanoglobin so the albumins in our blood uh, take up add mix with the methanoglobin and they form a compound called as methano methalbumin so this was just a glance for you guys to understand what it was it is how actually it takes place but whereas in our coming chapters i will be explaining in detail about uh, all the uh, major hemolytic anemias we will go through one by one in each of the chapter so stay tuned i'll meet you in the next video thank you thank you for watching the video